Ladies and gentlemen, it's really my privilege to speak at a venue where 200 years ago, you began rebelling against false orthodoxy. Today, I want to rebel with you against false orthodoxy by speaking on bovine matters. I mean, of course, cows. There is a cow in the room, and not everyone can see it. I hope that by the end of this debate, eyes will be opened. The orthodoxy, the herd opinion, if you like, is that animal agriculture has little to do with climate change. I believe that is very wrong. I believe that based on data. I'm an environmentalist by occupation, but a systems engineer by profession, and systems is what I do. I invented the protocol for transforming early analog internet connections to more robust digital connections while accelerating them tenfold. Still today, any data accessed on the internet likely pass through a device implementing this protocol. So I plead that this house rebel once again and vote for the proposition that this house would go vegan. Veganism is defined as a philosophy and way of living that seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. It is a very British movement. It started in the UK. The proposition asks that this house go vegan, not be vegan, implying that this is a journey, not a destination. And I highly recommend this journey on ethical, health, and environmental grounds. And I will now focus on the environmental reasons to go vegan. It is undeniable that human civilization has adversely impacted life support systems on the planet. Scientists have identified nine planetary boundaries that we must stay within for the sustainability of life on Earth. At the moment, we have transgressed six of them. And any one of these transgressions is enough to kill life as we know it on this planet. The good news is that when we go vegan, we help resolve all six of them. That's the power we have as individuals to reverse our existential crisis. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of ecological destruction because it uses 37% of the ice-free land area of the planet just to graze animals uh, while bottom trawling an area of the, uh, of the ocean floor the size of South America every year for industrial fishing. Animal agriculture is the only major activity in which we destroy forests and replace them with, not with other trees for timber or paper, but with grass which drastically reduces the diversity of life that the land can support. Animal agriculture is the primary reason why humans have reduced the number of trees on the planet by half, from six trillion to three trillion over the past 10,000 years. Restoring those three trillion trees can draw down enough carbon to completely reverse climate change. Animal agriculture is grossly inefficient because animals must eat 39 pounds of plants to produce one pound of human food on average, a burden which the world can no longer afford. By going vegan, we can give nearly 40% of the land area of the planet back to nature, as well as the entire ocean. When we restore the native ecosystems on that land, we can grow most of the three trillion trees that we cut down over the past 10,000 years. This helps resolve all six planetary boundary transgressions. The least violated transgression is freshwater change. Rewilding the land that's currently used for grazing animals will restore the freshwater cycles of the planet. The next is land system change. Going vegan will allow us to return nearly 40% of the land area of the planet back to nature, resolving this planetary boundary transgression. The next worst transgression is climate change which can be resolved when the excess carbon in the atmosphere is absorbed in the trees and soil that we can restore to the ecosystems of the planet. 
The next is chemical pollution, which should be safely stored away in regenerating forests when we go vegan. Eating animal foods currently delivers concentrated doses of this chemical pollution into our bodies through bioaccumulation. Therefore, going vegan addresses chemical pollution for both the earth and for ourselves. The next worst transgression is nitrogen and phosphorus loading, mainly through our overuse of synthetic fertilizers for crops. Since over half the crops are being fed to animals, going vegan will resolve this transgression as well. All of these transgressions impact wildlife, and therefore biodiversity loss is the worst of the six planetary boundary transgressions. By restoring habitats for wild animals and allowing them to freely live in the ocean, we resolve this transgression as well. If instead we let wild animals die, we die. It's that serious. There are two explanations for perhaps the greatest threat ever faced by civilization and all life on Earth, the imminent danger of runaway climate change. One explanation, the one we hear about all the time from our leading climate spokespeople, is the burning of fossil fuels. It is certainly true that the burning of fossil fuels contributes greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, thereby warming the planet. But the other explanation, what I call the cow in the room, is rarely addressed. The human folly of exploiting animals, that is animal agriculture. Excuse me. When these two sources of greenhouse gases are compared in the media, fossil fuel burning is almost always emphasized and is almost always assigned the greater responsibility for causing climate change. But the opposite is true. When you factor in the potential carbon absorption of the forest land that is cleared for animal agriculture, you find, with any honest accounting, as I published in a peer-reviewed paper, that animal agriculture is responsible for at least 87% of greenhouse gases on an annual basis. When I made that calculation, I did not include the respiration of farmed animals. I did not include the bottom trawling of the oceans by industrial fishing. I did not include the carbon released by pasture maintenance fires set annually on grazing lands around the world. I did not include the loss of phytoplankton populations and sea forests due to industrial fishing. I did not include these factors mainly because they haven't been reliably assessed due to a futile attempt by the orthodoxy to hide the cow in the room. But it seems clear to me that if we could estimate these factors and include them in our calculation, we would find that animal agriculture is responsible for, wait for it, more than 100% of greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. Now that sounds unbelievable. How could it possibly be responsible for more than 100%? Because the evidence points to the possibility that the Earth will cool in a vegan world even if we continue all our other activities as we do today. The cessation of animal agriculture will result in healthy oceans, healthy forests, and healthy soils. And if you want to reverse climate change, then we must adopt a strategy that can draw down greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. Healthy oceans and sea forests can do that. Healthy soils and trees can do that. Solar panels and electric cars cannot. Now, I'm not a supporter of the fossil fuel industry. Far from it. It's my engineering assessment that we must wean ourselves off fossil fuels eventually, but gradually. But if we burn fossil fuels to heat and cool our homes, to transport ourselves, to ship goods, to manufacture goods. These are all social goods. What social good comes from animal agriculture? Nothing. Only obesity, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, biodiversity destruction, soil depletion, falling of our waterways, antibiotic resistance, dangerous and dehumanizing work, animal cruelty, climate catastrophe, world hunger, and let's not forget pandemics. Indeed, there is nothing that will not improve 
when we end the cruelty and folly of ex exploiting animals. I have just given you the intellectual reasons to go vegan, but lasting change comes not from the head, but from the heart. In that regard, I have made a pinky promise to our granddaughter, Kimaya, that the world will go largely vegan by 2026, which is the year we will have killed almost all the wild elements on Earth if we do not change course. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm confident that true to your 200-year tradition of rebelling against false orthodoxy, this house will once again break away from the herd, see the cow in the room, and vote for the proposition to help our generation keep this sacred promise for all the children of the world. Thank you for your consideration from the bottom of my heart.